I'm Neil Daniels and uh, retired airline captain. Uh, I've been flying airplanes since uh, 1936 and I've flown everything from single place sailplanes up to uh, captain on 747s. Uh, my logbook shows uh, well over 30,000 hours of flying time. And up until just recently, I've been flying my Cessna 182. During the World War II, uh, I got into cadet school and uh, ended up in B-17s and uh, served over in the 8th Air Force, and I did a tour of missions over there. Fortunately, I completed it without too much problem, and I came back uh, after the war was over and went to work for the airlines. And uh, this incident happened uh, when I was flying as captain on a DC-10. It was about uh, 8 o'clock in the evening. We were about halfway between Buffalo, New York, and Albany on uh, the called J-94 Airways. The uh, airplane was flying on the autopilot, on the first officer's autopilot. It was his turn to fly. And I was doing the radio commentary and uh, talking to air traffic control, and uh, all of a sudden the airplane uh, started a left turn, a bank about 20 degrees off course. And uh, air traffic control in Boston asked us what uh, what our intentions were. I said, well, as soon as we figure out what it is, I will let you know. And so we all looked to the left at that time, and there was this very bright, very brilliant light object off to the left of the aircraft. It's hard to determine not just how far away it was or anything at night. But it did disrupt all three compasses on the aircraft, and this is what the concern was. Uh, normally that doesn't happen. So uh, the uh, first officer looked at this object, and uh, the flight engineer got out of his seat and looked out the window behind me and saw it. And we turned the autopilot off and, and proceeded to go back on course towards Albany. Uh, I asked air traffic control if they had any objects uh, showing on their radar off the left wing, and their answer was negative. They didn't have any. So uh, thinking it all over, uh, we decided not to say anything about it until later on uh, because of the time delay and everything. We had a quick turnaround and we were going to go back the next day. So it was uh, some time before uh, I got to talk to you about this and, and write the report. Mm -hmm. Could you describe something about the compasses? Well, the thing that, uh, that what got my attention was the fact that all three compasses were showing different readings on it. And so there was a magnetic force involved in this incident that uh, affected the autopilot and made the aircraft turn off course. The aircraft flying on the uh, first officer's autopilot on heading mode, when the uh, this influence, whatever it was, hit it, and the airplane turned into a 20-degree bank, the, the autopilot should have disengaged, but it didn't until uh, he pushed the button and disengaged the autopilot himself and then returned back on course again. After we got back going again and got uh, headed toward Albany and back on autopilot where everything functioned normally, um, I watched the aircraft, dis or whatever this object was, disappear back towards the 8 o'clock position. And then all of a sudden it picked up speed and uh, zip, it was gone, just like that. And that was the brief uh, incident. But, uh, there was something there that I didn't, didn't really understand. I'd like to comment briefly on Captain Daniel's sighting, uh, because I think that there's something really quite important uh, there in terms of the electromagnetic energy that was uh, uh, present. And it has to do with the deviation of the two gyro compasses. Now, it's one thing for a magnetic compass to, uh, to swing or to deviate and hold a new position because of a new magnetic field. It's quite another thing for a gyro compass to do this or to continue rotating. And it suggests that there is an inertial field, not a magnetic field effect here, a change in the inertial field at the airplane. Well, now, from a physics point of view, this cannot be explained. We don't know how to do that. But we may be uh, on the verge or on the edge of an understanding here 
of uh, new physics, a new understanding of how energy uh, may be manipulated, maybe not created, I'm not suggesting that, but at least manipulated uh, to control or affect the, the inertial field at the airplane in this case. And so what I'm looking for are the, the thumbprints, so the unique signatures of UFO uh, in the energy domain, in the, the areas uh, that would set it apart from natural phenomenon. Just as you and I have natural, uh, individual differences, that we have different um, thumbprints, for instance, or voice prints, or the retinas, uh, or the irises of our eyes are all different to make us unique. Uh, I suggest that we can learn something about the UFO phenomenon in the same way, by looking at what they have in common and what they have uh, making them unique from each other.